So I am going to start today by reviewing from yesterday. Yesterday we talked about measurements. So I'm gonna ask you guys to turn your voices off. You're with me, come sit over here. Yesterday we looked at measuring inches to the nearest half inch and quarter inch. So I want you to go back to page 160. Everybody find 160, make sure you have your ruler. Page 160. All right, if you need a ruler, I can get you one. Okay, so what I noticed yesterday, and I'm gonna ask again for hold but sit down and I'll answer questions in a minute. I'm gonna ask that you watch how I measure because when I walked around, it looked like some of us were struggling a little bit with measuring the line segments because some of you were starting on the one. So I'm gonna actually demonstrate it. We're gonna kind of go through it together. So looking at number seven, this is page 160. It said to estimate the length of each line segment in inches, then to measure it. So maybe I thought this was five inches, right? That could have been my estimate. Then I had to measure it. I want you to do this with me, so get your ruler. Make sure it's on inches. For the kids that are here, we have it on the red side. Now, what I don't want to see you do, don't line it up to the one. If you do that, you're not gonna get the accurate measurement. You wanna take the edge of the ruler, or if your ruler has a zero, you would line it up with the zero. Now let's look and see what does this line segment, Sawyer, your ruler is on the red line segment right now. Everybody is doing this with me. Everybody's ruler is lined up. Max, let's see it. Not a pencil. I wanna see that ruler. Put it on the paper. Sunny, you too. Okay, watch. Starting at the end of the line segment and the end of the ruler. Here's one inch, two inches. How many inches is that? Three. So we have three total, but what about this section? Three and a, it's half of an inch or one, two fourths, two out of four equal parts. So I showed you yesterday how to write fractions. There's your three. Here's an example of one half right in the direction. So three and one half, and remember it's inches. That's what you should have gotten. Now some of you got four and a half because you lined it up wrong. Okay, so looking at the blue, maybe I think this one, if that's three and a half, I'm gonna say this is about four and a half inches. That's my estimate. Now do it with me. And even if you did it yesterday, do it again. Because we were concerned as we walked around. Line it up to the edge of the line segment. Jensen, I wanna see you doing it. I wanna see you guys doing it at home. Now, I've got it lined up. There's one inch, two inches, three inches. How much? About a little over four, not enough to count it. So we're gonna say four inches approximately, as close as we can, because they said measure it to the nearest half inch, and it's not another half inch, is it? Okay, let's try the green one. Well, if that's four inches, I think that's gonna be a little over than four, so maybe four and a half inches this time. Let's see, lining it up. Do it with me, is your ruler lined up? Max, is your ruler lined up? Okay, let's look at it. 
one inch, two inches, three inches, four, and what is this little part here? Is it a half of an inch? This is half of an inch. It's only one fourth, right? It's one out of four of those equal parts, one over four. So actually it's four and one fourth of an inch. So that's how you would write that fraction, one over four. And that is just means one out of those four equal parts on that ruler. Now at the bottom, it's asking me to draw line segments. Look how fun this is. When you draw a line segment that's five inches, you are going to put your ruler down. You're gonna start your line segment at the end and you're gonna draw until you get to what number? Five, and you're gonna stop there. And then when you remove the ruler, you have a five inch line segment. Yeah, because you're using a ruler, it'll be straight. Thank you. Go ahead and draw a line segment that is five inches. Now, what was nice and easy about that one is we didn't have to use any fractions, right? But look what's gonna happen on number 11. We're gonna use a fraction. We're gonna have to find four and a half inches. So let's try it. If we start about at the same place as our last legs line segment, we know it's gonna be shorter than this one that's five inches. So I'm gonna draw one inch, two inches, three, four, stop. Now I have to do half. Here's one fourth, here's two fourths. Remember when I said two fourths is equivalent or equal to half? I can see that that's the dividing spot. So I'm gonna stop bet halfway between four and five. Is it shorter than my five inch line segment? Yeah. Yes, it better be, right? Because four and a half inches is half an inch shorter than five inches. All right, look at number 12. I'm gonna line it up at the same place as I did the other two. And now we're going to draw a line segment. Finn, do this with me or watch first, then do it. Are you drawing them? Good job. Okay, let's do four and three fourths. So Finn, where am I going to stop at this time? Okay, he says, if you didn't hear what Finn said, there's four inches. Now I have to do three fourths of an inch, not the whole inch. But he said, go to the third line. So here's one, two, three. That's the three-fourths line. Do you see that? Are you looking? Do you have it drawn? Three-fourths of an inch. Line it up. Let's see. Turn, you turn it over to inches. That's okay. I think you're going to be okay. Does it line up to th four and three-fourths? That's the four and a half. Now let's get the four and three-fourths. Nice, good, okay. So that's how you draw line segments. You use a straight edge. You use the ruler, you have to count your equal parts for your fraction. Now this next step is super duper important because it's gonna be what we use for our line plots today. But we're not quite ready for that yet. The directions read, use, this is number 13, you can follow along in your head. Use a straight edge, which is gonna be your ruler, to draw a line segment. Oh, well, no, wait. No, 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 we can't, That never mind. It's, I take that back. Put your ruler down by your feet. Put your ruler by your feet. Take your math spiral. Okay, I'm gonna use my math workbook. You can use your spiral, because it says use a straight edge, and we're gonna draw a line segment that you think, you think will be two and a half inches long. I am not expecting anyone to get this exact. If you get it exact, it's gonna kind of mess up the activity. So it, this is not a test. 
It is not to see if you know how to draw a line segment that is exactly two and a half inches. It's not, don't worry about that. I'm gonna draw a line that I think is about two and a half inches. So watch what I do. I'm gonna say, well, that's about one inch. That's about two and that's probably about three. And I'm gonna just draw like that. Okay, so that's my line segment from there to there. That's what I think is gonna be two and a half. I want you guys to use your match spiral, the edge of it, and draw a line segment that you think will measure two and a half inches long. Not yet, not yet. Where is it? I don't see your line segment. Nope, it's on this paper. Can you do it on your paper, please? Do it right on your paper. Do it on your paper. Do it on the end of your book. Come on, Sue. Got it? Okay, good. Abby's got it. Nope, we're going to do it on here. Use the edge of your paper. Use the edge to help you. Draw a line segment that you think is about two and a half inches long. Good job. You got it? You're going to draw it right here. Use the edge to help you. Honestly, we won't be able to do our activity. It won't work. So watch what I do. When I measure mine, I see that I did mine one, two, one quarter, two quarters. Oh, goodness. I'm going to say about three fourths. So mine is about approximately two and three fourths of an inch. I didn't get two and a half. Now I want you to measure yours and write on your page 160 what yours measured. Two and a fourth? Oh my God. Uh, 
Ready to roll. So don't lose that number, that measurement. You are going to need to know that. So I want, actually, before we do anything, I am going to ask you to share it with me. That would be, make the most sense. So in order for this to work, I need everybody's, I'm just gonna have you tell me what your actual measurement was for your line segment. Lila Fitz, what did you get? She's right there. Two, Two inches? Okay, thank you. I'm gonna stop sharing for so I can see you. Okay, Ben, what did, what was yours? Sir, you can't really hear the instructions to us, it's listening to other people and stuff. Okay, can everyone turn your voices off? Guys, you, can you turn your voices off for a minute? Can you say that again, bud? Um, I can't really hear the instructions, so I just he heard what other people said. Okay, Clara, how about you? What was your measurement? Two. Two inches? Okay, Gavin. So Gavin, what did your line segment measure? Can you unmute and tell us? 
You know what? Actually, why don't you guys just write it in the chat because it seems like nobody's answering me. Write it in the chat. Okay, so this is my remote so far. All right, Abby, what was yours? Three inches. What was yours, August? Two and a half. What was yours, Evie? Two inches. Two inches. What about you, Miss Haley Booker? Two and, four. Two and a fourth inches. How about you, Lennox? What did we write? One and three fourths inch. Yes, Ben. Two and one fourth. Two and one fourth. Max. Well, there's no correct. It was just an estimate. What are you thinking, Miss Lila? What did you get? Just two inches. What about you, Miss Ellie? All right, Josh. Oh, wrong Josh, but okay. Three and one fourth, Josh Lewis. One and a half. All right, Elena. Three and one fourth. How about you, Gabe? Three and one fourth. Yes, Madison. One inch. How about you, Miss Serene? Can you stop? Thanks. Three and a half. Can you stop, Ben? Can you move away from my table there? Paxton. All right, Lucas. Two and three quarters. Marin. One and a half. What about you, Lyric? Three. How about you, Cooper? He got two and one fourth. Go ahead. The other Max, Mr. Fox. Good job reading your fractions, guys. How about you, Sawyer? How about you, Robert? Thank you. Who did I not get? Charlie. Yes. What was it? Okay, four fourths. I was thinking four fourths. Thank you, Sunny. Did anyone not get a turn? Everybody here is good. Then okay, Mrs. Harrison. Four more two and two three fourths. And one that's two and three fourths. Two that are two and three fourths. Two and three fourths and three fourths. Okay, so here's what I'm doing, you guys. I'm collecting data. This is important for our lesson today that I have not even introduced. You do not have to have this written. This is just our process that we are gonna have to do in order to create a line plot. So thank you for your work with that. I'm seeing a lot of trouble with rulers. So I'm gonna ask you to put them aside. We don't need them right now. All right, so now we're gonna go back to today's lesson that was our review from yesterday. So today we are going to, and you'll see because we just kind of focused on it, we're gonna measure length in inches, half inches, and quarter inches with rulers. We just did that, right? And that's because there's a lot of real life problems that involve measuring. How many of you have ever done the Home Depot activities, maybe when you were younger or even now, or if you're in Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, any projects like that where you've measured. Yeah, if you wanna build a birdhouse, you're gonna to need to know how to measure. You wanna build a dollhouse, you wanna make a fork, you're gonna to need to measure. So we, yesterday we measured with non-standard units. We noticed that the pencils didn't work so well, right? And that's why we need standard units like inches, and feet and yards. Today, we're gonna continue our work with inches. We're gonna 
we measured and drew line segments to the nearest inch and half inch and fourth inch. But the main thing we're really gonna work on today, because this is part two of lesson um, 3.1, is using data, let's see, let me go back, using that data that we just gathered to create a line plot. So we will be doing that today. But let's go ahead and just do these quickly. We should be able to run through them today. Get out your math spiral. Let's warm up our math brains. Miss Clara Carlson, so good to see you. Do you know what seven times six equals? Maybe if we start with six times six, that will help us. Six times six is 36. If we know six times six is 36, Clara, what would one more six be if we added six to 36 to get seven times six? 42. You are a smart cookie. Exactly. All right. Eight times eight. Josh. 64. I ate and I ate till I got six on the floor. Eight times eight is 64. All right, seven times seven, Lucas. 49. How did you figure that out? We don't have a chance for it. Well, seven times seven, I mean. All right, but let's at least start with five times seven. What's five times seven? 30. 35. And then we can just add two more seven. 35 plus seven more. 42 plus seven more would equal 49. All right, Lila Morris, can you walk me through this problem? 657 plus 398. Let's start in the ones place. Seven plus eight. Nope, because of COVID. Sorry. Seven plus eight would equal fifteen. Okay, she says seven plus eight is fifteen. Carry that one, and one plus five is six, plus nine is? And so she said one plus six is seven, seven plus three is 10. Put the 10, make sure you go over three spots, place value spots, put that comma for your thousands. Let's read it without the word and. 1,055. All right, let's start in the ones place. Let me go. Four, four plus nine. Four plus nine. Thirteen. All right, she said one plus six is seven, seven plus five is 12. Carry that one, make a new group in the hundred. And then you add one plus seven. One plus seven is? Everything is complete. What's four? Did you eight plus four is 12. We had a base number field. 1,223. All right. Go ahead, Josh Carter. What do we do to subtract? Be careful. We're subtracting now. You're writing this line in your spiral. Do you have these written? Okay, that's what we're doing. You're writing them and solving them with me. Uh oh, can I do one minus three? No. If I have one piece of candy, can I give you three pieces of candy? No. No. What do I need to do, Josh? 
I have to borrow from the tens, make that a six. Now I've got 11. Can I do 11 minus three? Yeah. What would that be, Josh? Let's count backwards, 11, 10, nine, eight. Now we've got six minus four, can I do that? Yes. Yeah, if the number is bigger on top than below it, then you can subtract. Six minus four is? And then eight minus two is? Six. All right, looking at the last one here. Let's hear from Charlie. Five minus seven, can I do that? No. What do I have to do, Charlie? So Charlie says cross off the four, make it a three. We need a new group of 10. Ungroup that, give it to the one place. Now we have 15 minus seven. Can we do that? Charlie, what is 15 minus seven? Eight. Three minus seven, can I do that? If, it's, if I only have three of something, I can't take seven away. It has to be bigger on top. So Charlie, what do I have to do? All right, if you didn't hear Charlie, he said you got to cross out the nine, make it an eight, add the 10 to the three, or 13 minus seven, which is six. Now can we do eight minus six? Two hundred sixty-eight. You should have all of those problems written. No, I'm not here doing that explanation for you. I need to see that you can do this. I asked you to do it and you still didn't follow up. All right, guys, we are moving on. I'm going to ask for respect, and you know what? Those people who are being respectful, I'm going to think, I'm going to give out a lot of pause tickets. Yelling at me what page isn't very respectful, you know I'm going to show you, right? That's not very respectful. So I'm going to give pause tickets to the people who are. Um, we are not, let's see, do we have time for this? Actually, here's what I was going to ask you to do. Staying where you are because of, because of COVID, at home, I want you to find, I'm only going to give you about five to six minutes to do this. I want you to take your ruler, your math spiral, and your pencil. You're going to find four things in your house if you are at home to measure to the nearest inch, okay? So nearest half inch, quarter inch. Watch what I mean. You guys are gonna find something in your desk or near you. It might have to be on you. So watch what you can do. I can immediately measure this pencil. So in my math spiral, Boy, guys, I'm really struggling with all the extra noise. I would love for you guys just to listen. Only take a minute. I'm gonna pretend this orange piece of paper is my math spiral, and I'm gonna measure my pencil, and I see it's about seven inches. So I'm gonna write pencil, seven inches. Then I'm just gonna find things that are near me. Here's my remote. I'm gonna line that up. I see that's about, so I'm gonna write my remote. I'm lining up my remote to the edge of that ruler. The remote I'm gonna write is about five and a half inches. 
okay? I have the pause tickets. I'm gonna line those up and I see that's about, so my tickets, maybe you'll only get three done, are about three and a half inches. If you don't have enough things by you, you can measure your math spiral. You can measure your finger. Maybe you wanna measure your finger. You could measure the length of your wrist. Maybe you're gonna measure your foot, your shoe. So the people that are here in person, you have to do it at your desk or at your seat. All right, I'm gonna give you about five minutes. See how you do. So find, try to find four objects to measure to the nearest inch. Don't forget to line it up and start at the zero and you should be on inches.
You can't measure your ruler. That doesn't count. Okay, everybody. I hope that was some fun. I hope you found um, that at measuring, actually doing it isn't as hard as you thought. I saw a lot of people lining up the ruler correctly this time. So I think we came a long way from yesterday. Just reminding you, when you measure something, you want to line up your ruler. If it's greater than that number, if it doesn't come straight to it, Think about what part of the whole it is, what fraction, because I saw a lot of people still nervous about that. I get it, we haven't even discussed fractions yet, but that was our learning target for the past two days, trying to get to that nearest quarter inch. See how that's one fourth of the whole inch. Okay, let's get back to line plots. So, wondering what a line plot is. Here we go. Hey guys, I am over here. Come closer. Whoa. I am the number one, and I am going to learn about line plots today. Would you like to learn about line plots with me? Great. Let's go over here and collect our data for the line plot. That's what we did when we were doing the measurements of the line segments. We are going to get our data by measuring the length of some object that I have. We will then write the data we collect on a piece of paper. Which is what I did. Make the line plot. My friend Speedy will bring us some objects to measure. Here we have a pencil, and we need to measure the length. We will be measuring to the nearest whole number. Can you tell me the length of the pencil? The pencil is six inches long. Great job. Here we have a marker. How long is it? The marker is six inches long. It's about six, but I would say it's close to five and three fourths, wouldn't you? Hey, Speedy, can you bring us one more thing? What is this? Looks like Speedy wants to be measured. What is the length of my friend Speedy? It looks like you are four inches long. I think when they put the antennas down. I measured several other objects before you got there, and I have all of our measurements included on this board. Each number is a measurement of the length of an object. We need to put this information into a line plot so we can see this more clearly. To start off the graph, we first need a title. So what line plot is a type of graph. Object measurement or colors? Object measurement. I agree. We should call it object measurement since it is about measurements of objects. Next thing we need when doing line plots is a straight line. Sit down. All of our no, information sir. we collected was measured in inches. So here to the side, we will put inches. You're supposed to be learning. Okay. Here we have the numbers from 1 to 9 listed. So we can show our data. So now we look at our data to help us fill in the line plot. We can see that we only have one item that measured two inches. So we put one X here to represent that item. We have two items that measured three inches. So we have two X's on top. You can also of use dots. It doesn't have to be an X. There were three items. We'll use dots. So we have three X's yep. on top of each other. We have four items. Can you tune it up? So we put those X's down as well. We only had one object that measured nine inches. So just one X. This is awesome, guys. We just made a line plot that shows the measurements of the objects that I had. 
When we see a mark above a number, it tells us how many times that number occurs. For example, we can see that above the four, we see three X's, which means there were three objects that measured four inches long. So with this information, can you guys tell me how many objects did we have that measured six inches long? How many? Four. Great job. We have four items and we can see that in this line plot. We look at the six and above the number, we see four X's, which represent the four items that measured six inches. Great job, guys. Thanks for your help. All right. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Okay, so we are going to look at page 161. This is a line plot with fractions, which is great because that's what we've been dealing with. In this line plot, it shows the frequency or the amount of times, is what frequency means, of data on a number line. In science class, students measured the lengths of leaves in a leaf collection. They measured the lengths to the nearest one-fourth inch. The line plot shows the results. So, it says length of leaves in inches. Use the line plot to answer this question. How many leaves have a length of four and a half inches? Go to the line plot, find four and a half inches. Put your finger on it. How many dots do you see above it? Three. So what are you gonna write as your answer? Three. Three. So there are, here's four and a half. One, two, three. Three leaves have a length of four and a half inches. How many leaves have a length that is less than five inches? Well, let's count. We've got to find five inches is here. All of these are less, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we, if we don't have time for the next one, but if we were to write a question that could be answered using the line plot, you might come up with how many leaves have a length greater than five inches, right? Something, any other ideas? Maybe one or two? What do you think? A question you could ask that could be answered using this information. How many leaves were measured? So then you could count all the dots. How about one more? Is there a name? Um, 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 so how many leaves have a length greater than four and a half inches? Yep, we could do that. Okay. We are going to turn to page 162. That is the one I started. So I'm gonna switch over to my document camera where I have all my data. You guys are on page 162. You do not have to write all the data. I did that for you, but you will fill in the line plot with me. So let's do it. I have all these measurements, oh boy. And now I have to put the dots on here to represent all this data. Any suggestions how I might start? I don't even know where to start. Robert, what could I do to get started? I'm just calling you. What could I do to get started? I need to put a dot by each one of these because this is the, the line segments we measured. Okay, so I have to start with one. What would I do? What do I got to look for? In how many um, people they got one? Okay, good idea. He said we're going to start with one. I got to look up here and see how many ones I have. Can you guys tell me? Three. Three ones? I only one, see one. One, one. one, right? So draw one dot above one. It can't, it has to be just one. It can't have a fraction with it. 
Okay, now I'm looking for one and one fourth. Let's see if I have any down here. No. Do I have one and one fourth in this column? No, this one, this one, this one. Do I have any? Do I draw any dots, Sawyer? Do I draw any dots? I need your eyes up here. No, because there are none. What about one and a half? Let's look down this column. No? Yes, here's one. One, none in this one. <gasps> two, only two. So I get to draw two for one and one. Oh, nope, for one and a half, sorry. None for that one. All right, one and three fours. Let's go down the first column. Here's one, none here, none here, none, none. I got one, so I can put one dot above one and three fours. Oh boy, two has a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep, one, count with me. Two, three, four, five, Whoa, whoa, well, just don't count until we see one. There's only five so far, right? Okay, now we've got one, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have to draw nine dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dots above two. Wow. Yeah, you gotta write real small for that one. Let's look at two and one fourth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, that's a lot. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six for two and one fourth. Let's look at two and one half. One, two, three, just three. One, two, three. All right, two and three fourths. There's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six for two and three fourths. Now we're at three, did anyone get three? Oh yes, there's one, not that one, not that one. Two, just two. Any three and one fourths? Yeah, look at it. One, two, three for three and one fourths. One, two, three. And last but not least, I think it's three and a half, right? We only have one left. Three and a half, just one. Do we have any for three and three fourths or four? No. So here's what I want you to do take a minute. Answer the next two questions. Here they are. How many of the line segments have a measure of two and a half inches? And then which length appears the most often on the line plot? Go ahead and answer those. And then give me a thumbs up at home when you think you know the answer and in person. When you know the answers to numbers 18 and 19, give me thumbs up. I see Marin is ready. I see Charlie and Sunny and Max, Deesberg. I see Haley's got it. I see Miss Evie's ready. Abby's got it. Looking good, Josh. Lewis has it. Robert's ready. Cerne, Gabe, Madison. Okay, I'm going to pull out of my can. August. How many of the line segments had a measure of two and a half inches? 
three. Anyone disagree? I like that he went back to the line plot and counted one, two, three. All right, which length appears the most often on the line plot? How about Lucas? Two inches, anyone disagree with that? No, that's right, that had nine, right? Look at it, the one with the greatest amount had, was, had the most, two inches. All right. So line plots are just a graph. It's a way of displaying data. How are you feeling about line plots? How do you feel about line plots? Thumb up, thumb in the middle, thumb down. How are you feeling about measuring to the nearest quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch? That's a little different, right? Those are two different skills. I see some sideways, I see you, Max. Thank you for sharing. Don't panic if you're sideways or down on that. That one is tough. Here is what I'm gonna ask you to do. Think about what we practiced. Think about what we read and saw. And I want you on your exit ticket to explain how to measure a line segment to the nearest one fourth inch. That's what you did when you got your objects. That's what you did when you measured your line segments. We did it yesterday and today. So I passed out my class, but not yours. I was trying to help. Thank you. Um, so if you are at home, you are going to find this on your assignment. Please, please, please. When you go to your assignment today in math, let me show you again. This is for you two birds, since you don't usually do that. Today is lesson 3.1, part two for Tuesday. You click on that. You're gonna click on exit ticket. You will write Lila directly on this ticket. You'll write your answer and then you'll get the option to turn it in. I am taking grades for these, please, please. I have extra. Two, okay, I'll grab them. It should be. All right, so if you are remote, I will see you guys manana. You may leave the meeting and do your exit ticket. Bye. Bye guys, thank you for your hard